Here's the wrong way to farm. Whoa! I'll tell you about one robotic company's mission to eliminate pesticides for good. Kind of like... Plus our pick of the week coming up. Recreating the Garden of Eden is a formidable task, but iGen is on a mission to take us there one toxic-free field at a time. Their new Element Gen 2 robot is a solar-powered, AI-driven weed destroyer built to help farmers break free from pesticides for good. After clocking 10,000 plus hours on real farms, Element Gen 2 is tougher, smarter, and ready to clean up cotton, soy, and sugar beet fields without a drop of chemicals. With sharper AI, beefed up solar power, and all-wheel drive muscle, it's built to demolish aggressive weed ground forces. Weeds are troublemakers, and the Element Gen 2 is set to free California cotton fields from them this year. But what can it do about another troublemaker, the snake? As herbicide resistance grows and chemical costs soar, iGen's robots roll in with cleaner fields, healthier harvests, and zero pesticides. And that means a better life. And in order to make better designs, you need reliable, authentic parts. So let's check one out in our premier product highlight, sponsored by Mauser Electronics. The DF Robot DIN Rail Mount Bracket provides a quick and easy mounting solution for Arduino projects. Made of durable, fireproof PVC material, it ensures long-lasting performance and safety. Compatible with Arduino boards like the Uno R3 and Leonardo, this bracket allows for convenient installation on DIN rails. The set includes a Uno DIN rail mount adapter, making it ideal for building and organizing Arduino-related projects efficiently. The DF Robot DIN rail mount bracket is perfect for DIYers and developers looking to enhance their setups. Check it out today by visiting mauser.com or click the link below. Learning is like a gift card, so let's cash it in at David's Corner. Thanks, Andy. You know, in a channel that's all about control systems, we don't often turn to the hardware components, the nuts and bolts that hold everything together, but they are really important. And any control engineer who says that they don't enjoy working with the hardware is probably lying just a little bit. Let's take a look at one of those components that's really important throughout all control cabinets and enclosures, and that is the DIN rail. Now, these DIN rails, usually have slots down the middle and a raised lip or edge that allow the devices to connect smoothly to it and to be removed whenever necessary. Now, if we look at the different sizes and styles of DIN rails, we'll notice that some of them have this wider profile, some of them are taller than others, some of them are smaller. And it's not just the DIN rails themselves, but even the mounting devices can be standoffs, they can be directly screwed to the back of a backplane inside of a cabinet, and they can also have angled connectors if we need to have something that stands up at an angle inside the cabinet. There's all sorts of different ways that they can be used. And it's not just the shapes and sizes, but it's also the materials as well. Steel is a pretty common material for these DIN rails because as we connect the grounding adapters, we can connect our system earth ground, and it's connected throughout all of the components that must be grounded to the DIN rail and therefore to the rest of the enclosure. But we can also have aluminum devices, which usually cost a little bit more, but they're much lighter. These can come in short strips, they can come in long strips, but a word to the wise is don't try and cut these with any sort of hacksaw or a big pair of steel cutters. Instead, they make DIN rail breaks. That's a large component with a handle that when you pull down on the handle, it shears it off and leaves the edges without sharp hanging off edges that can be a danger or need to be cleaned up later. In addition, when you put this inside of any sort of cutter, then you'll often have it at an angle, you'll have it bent at the end or extremely hot, the shape will be slightly different. So we need to be really careful about how we work with these hardware components, and that's often something we don't think about when we're dealing strictly with the control system components themselves. So when we're designing control systems, we need to make sure to consider not just the hardware that goes inside the control system, but we also need to establish a solid connection for all of the field devices, 
things that are going to be existing on the machines and inside the central control cabinet, and that involves selecting the proper type of DIN rail, nuts, bolts, and other hardware that really are the glue that hold the entire control system together. Andy, back to you. Are you a smart bite or smart bit? We'll showcase two components available from Mauser.com and you must match the right product to each question. The questions are scored using actuator output percentage. At the end, you'll see if you're a smart bite or smart bit. Duna, can you please introduce the products? You bet, Andy. First, the Nordic Semiconductor NRF54L SOC module delivers superior 2.4 GHz radio performance and supports the latest connectivity standards, including Bluetooth 5.4, mesh, thread, and matter. Next up is the analog devices ADIN6310, a six port gigabit ethernet switch with TSN support for low latency, reliable industrial networking. Back to you, Andy. Thank you, Juna. Okay, the first question is worth 25 percentage points. Here we go. What is a key benefit of the Nordic Semiconductor NRF54L SOC module? Is it A, precise transmit power control up to plus 8 dBm in 1 dB increments? Or B, bulk power output up to plus 20 dBm in 5 dB increments? The answer is A. Precise transmit power control up to plus 8 dBm in 1 dB increments. The next question is also worth 25%. Here we go. What feature does the analog device's ADIN6310 offer for communication reliability? Is it A. Standard Ethernet for high-speed data transfer or B. Time-sensitive networking support for low-latency communication? Answer is B, TSN support for low latency communication. That brings us to our final question worth 50%. Here we go. Which product offers flexible power options as a key design benefit? Is it A, Nordic Semiconductor NRF54L SOC module, or B, Analog Devices ADIN6310 Industrial Ethernet Switch? Answer is A, the analog device's ADIN6310 industrial ethernet switch. One design advantage of the NRF54L SOC module would be its low power consumption. You can find out more about these products by going over to mauser.com or by clicking the links below. Be sure to check out our other shows. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.